Michigan Liberation is a statewide network of people and organizations organizing to end the criminalization of black families and communities of color in Michigan. We envision a state without mass incarceration, mass policing, and punishment. We envision a state with the best public education in the nation, single-payer health care, and thriving black and brown communities. Here on the Respect the Rules podcast, we will lift up the stories and experiences of those impacted by mass incarceration, collective ties to the criminal legal system, and the frontline efforts to end mass incarceration. Hello, everybody. I'm Miss Marjan, and welcome to another episode of Respect the Roots, Michigan Liberation's amazing podcast. We are kicking off a new season, season two, and I want to thank all of you who tuned in through all our various platforms to check us out. I'm telling you, season two is going to blow your socks off. But anyway, I want to go ahead and introduce my amazing guest, my brother from another mother, Dr. Eddie Connor. And before I bring him in to view, I want to go over his amazing bio and everything. Um, Dr. Eddie, Dr. Eddie, we're, oh man, I got to take my glasses off on this one, y'all. Y'all bear with me. You know how I am. But Dr. Eddie Connor, man, is overcome so many obstacles and he is a survivor of stage four cancer. He's also a spokesperson of the American Cancer Foundation, uh, man, an empowerment speaker, prof- college professor, radio TV correspondent. I mean, he's just a visionary person. I mean, he's came up with the Access Identity Conference. I know our digital manager got a chance to attend that. That's been in over, what, 24 states, 13 countries. He's the founder of the Eagles Academy. He has served on the president of the National Entrepreneurs Association of Michigan, I mean, my goodness, I, I'm telling you, Dr. Eddie, I'm just, I'm like, you, know, you need to do my bio. But any anyway, bestseller author of 16 books, all right, New York Times bestseller, all right, Reach 40 Black Men Speak on Living, Leading, and Succeeding. I mean, he's been, he was just on TEDx, you know, the TED Talk. For those of you here in Detroit, I saw him on Live in the D, did an amazing interview there. He's worked with T.D. Jakes, Megafest. Um, He's been in the BET documentary, It Takes a Village to Raise Detroit, and also in the movie Lady Luck 2. He is also the founder of the mentoring and legacy program Boys to Books, all right, that empowers young males via um, legacy, leadership, and life skills. I mean, we're going to be talking about that a little bit later, Dr. Connor. But anyway, he's the recipient of the President Barack Obama Volunteer Service Award, the President Barack Obama Lifetime Achievement Award from the White House. Hello. The top 35 millennial influencers in America, the top 100 leaders who's who in black Detroit, two-time Spirit of Detroit recipient, Michigan Chronicles Top 40 Under 40 recipient, and also author of the year by Kingdom Image Awards. I'm telling you, I present to you none other than Dr. Eddie Connor. What's going on, Eddie? What an honor. What an honor to be able to join you today. Ms. Marjan Parham, what an amazing, my sister from another mister. (laughs) Hey. So I, I respect the roots. Is what it's all about. Man, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, I'm so glad you yeah. um, are here with me in the studio, Dr. Eddie. And let's just dive right into it. Man, your, your, I mean, your, your, your story, your journey. Um, in your bio, I mentioned survivor of stage four cancer. Tell us about yourself, man. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, what you're talking about in the bio is the fruit, uh, but the root of what it is that I've been through is um, like Langston Hughes said, that, that linguist, uh, that rhetorical genius who said, life for me ain't been no crystal stare. Right. And so uh, having to actually um, walk on the shards of life and uh, the critical aspects of uh, precarious positions and places, uh, 2023 marks 23 years of me being cancer free. That's what's... Yes, yes. Nothing man. Nothing but the grace of God. And so... To live through dying places, to find the canon cancer, to recognize, you know, your test of testimony, your misery is ministry, uh, your mess becomes a message, your your stumbling block becomes a stepping stone. God uses your setback as a setup for your greatest comeback. That's what I'm you talking know, about. Use your tragedy as strategy. And, and it's to bless other people. It's to help somebody else uh, to grow through what it is that you go through. And so um, this journey has been uh, uh, been rather remarkable while painful. 
Uh, but it has been a, a blessing to be able to be a blessing to other people. Wow, Dr. Eddie, man. And yeah. in your, I mean, so much, you've accomplished so much, you know, and I know being a cancer survivor, or should we say thriver, yeah, you know, some yeah. people use the word interchangeably, mm-hmm. um, you've been able, it's probably helped you to achieve so many things that I mentioned, but I know last week you participated in the, in the TEDx, right? Yes. How was that? Tell us about that. Oh my goodness. It was absolutely a, an amazing experience. Something I've been wanting to do for years and to finally get the opportunity to uh, share about, yes, my journey, but also the work that I do to empower our boys through literacy, leadership, and life skills enrichment and, and the whole aspect of even the connectivity between illiteracy and incarceration, how to stamp that out wow. and bring that to the conscience of uh, our people. Uh, and then also speak truth to power. Yes. Uh, to put it on awareness. This is what we need to do. And, uh, you know, I'm just the least likely, but God uses the least likely to do the most mighty. And so uh, to be on that stage and to share phew, was, was just an amazing experience. And the preparation for it, oh, I was ready. I was ready for it. Wow, because yeah, I yeah. saw you on Live in the D. And so just yeah. give us a little idea. What for those of us who, who've never been to a TEDx talk or, you know, what yeah. what all the preparation and what was it like? I know it was like a ticketed event mm-hmm. and where was it and everything. Yeah. Give us a little, give us the 411. Right, right, right. Skinny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happened on September 28th. Uh, it was actually at the Motor City Soundboard, amazing stage there where you hear all your you know, uh, Frankie Beverly and Mays, lot. Do you hear uh, the Jacksons and you know uh, wow. every uh, everybody that you can possibly think of who's a uh, who matriculates through music, right? Um, and so to be able to get that that uh, yes to speak on the TED Talk stage and really TED Talk is just all about bringing uh, people who are you know inspiring, innovative. Uh, people who just want to light the cauldron of your ideas to think something, think out of the box type of thinkers and uh, really speak, you know, life into your life. And so uh, to be able to do that with uh, 31 other speakers. Wow. And I was second to last <laughs> as, oh. a, as a speaker on the stage. It was literally an all day event from about 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, but it brought a lot of uh, innovative Detroiters to the stage and let them know that, hey, Detroit is a, a think tank. Uh, for greatness. And so uh, it was great to be able to be one of those chosen. Wow. Dr. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. And everybody can get on that, that stage. It's that a te- tough stage I, to get on. <laughs> yeah. I knew a couple of people like the comedians and that were there. But when I saw that you were going to be there, I was like, oh, man, I oh, I know that's going to be amazing. And you also, this leads us into your book, Identity. Yeah. And I know you've been, like I said, dealing with your um conference as well right. and tell everybody about identity what is the book about i mean you've yeah. written so many books you're a new york best new york times bestseller i had to almost stumble <laughs> i'm so honored <laughs> I, I, I stumbled I, I don't usually stumble <sighs> dr eddie but new york best time i mean new york times bestseller yeah, yeah that is amazing you know so tell us about your new book identity Right. Uh, You know, I think uh, our world has been going through an identity crisis. People trying to figure out what life is post-pandemic. Who the hell we are. Right. You know, (laughs) (laughs) try try to find out what it is that I'm rooted in. And so um, a lot of it has been a facade and and frailties and, you know, just been so focused on likes, but not love. Yeah. Finances, but no foundational framework. And I really wanted to uh, ask the people a question and really bring it from this particular genesis, um, you know, that somebody's waiting for you to become who you are so they can become who they're supposed to be. Here's the question. How much longer will you make them wait? Say that again. Yeah. Dr. yeah. Eddie. <laughs> you got to re- you got to repeat that again. <laughs> so nice. I say it twice. Somebody's waiting for you to become who you are so they can become who they're supposed to be. The question is, how much longer will you make them wait? Wow. That's you know, deep. Yeah. With this podcast is. Uh, really just a, a symbolic aspect of you taking the step to do something when other people said that you couldn't. Right. And uh, we're, we're experiencing the idea. We're sitting in your idea and your vision of uh, Michigan liberation. And that's what I wanted to do with this book, bring liberation to people's mindset. When you're talking about mental health, when you're looking at uh, purpose and personality and personal development and discovering who it is that you are throughout a myriad of circumstances, this book becomes a, a symbolic breaking point 
uh, to give people breakthrough and to deal with the trauma, the triggers, and the, and how to triumph from all of that. Right. And so uh, it's just a chapter in my journey, and I'm giving people the strategies on how to really make their life work. Wow, wow, Dr. Yeah. If you just joined us, I'm talking to Dr. Eddie Connor. <laughs> um, I already made him part of my family, but and our Michigan Lib family. But Absolutely. he is an author, so many different accolades. I mean, it's just so much. And even here, like your boys to books, I mean, you have a mentoring program and along with all the different um, awards that you receive. But I really want to spend the rest of this conversation, Dr. Eddie, talking about empowerment and how you do that in the various um, platforms that you work with Mm -hmm. and everything. You know, um, the the title today or our show is Empowering People to Maximize Their Purpose. And that's what you're good at doing. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and it, uh, purpose becomes a, a portal through the prism of pain and having to grow through what it is that I went through and live through dying places. And and then I think it's the onus and the responsibility is now on you to help other people come out of what it is that you were in. Right. You know? Wow, yeah. Dr. Eddie. That's deep. That's deep. Um, mm-hmm. When you're doing this empowering um with our young males. Let's talk about that. Yeah. What are you seeing? What's going on? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're seeing with our young males, I think our children spell love, T-I-M-E. Mm. A lot of it was we spelled it G-I-F-T-S. Right. <laughs> and gifts without time uh, really um, does not move into a place of development. And what I saw, the mentoring that I do is because of what I didn't have. I grew up without a father in my life. And I think the question that many of our young people are asking is, how do I play a role if I wasn't given a script? Right. Our boys want to know, how do I become a man if I didn't see one, much less interact with one? And, you know, a lot of of them are growing up in broken homes, dilapidated uh, neighborhoods, and um, lack of proper proper, uh, etiquette in schools. Yes. And... um, I, I, my background is in education. So I taught school, high school for about 12 years. Wow. And, um, literacy became one of the things, the main ingredients for me. I did, I did my master's degree looking at reading and literacy. And as, uh, Dr. Jawan Zakanjufu, he has a book called The Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys. He mentions in that book that they're building prisons based on second and third grade reading scores. Say, yeah. Wait, wait. Say yeah. that again, Dr. Yeah. Eddie, because I think somebody needs to yeah. really catch that. Say oh, that yeah. again. Yeah. For any business to be successful, it has to have a barometer by which we measure. For the prison industry to be successful, the barometer is second and third grade reading scores. And generally, it's black and brown brothers who are at a disadvantage. And we are disproportionately where, warehoused in these yet to be United States of America, where America is, houses 95 percent of the world's prison population. Right, And so looking at the whole aspect of illiteracy and incarceration are interconnected. And we oftentimes deal in the whole aspect of rehabilitation. But I said, why don't we deal in prevention? Rather Mm. than locking up our brothers, what can we do to unlock their dreams? And literacy is one of those key ingredients. We have a plethora of mentoring programs. But mentoring without literacy enrichment is more of a liability than an asset. And what I saw in my classroom that whenever a boy would open up his book, he would close his eyes. Mm. The book became the most comfortable pillow. And, you know, we have all this whole aspect of read the great Gatsby, this, that, and the other, but we don't have in our schools culturally relevant reading material to where our children can see themselves reflect in the books that they read. Wow. Yeah, and so Walter Dean Myers, who wrote over 100 books, black man, said, if I'm not in the book, words transmit values, books transmit values. Right. If I'm not in the book, what does that say about my value? Wow. So our boys and our girls need to be reading material, culturally relevant material, to where they can see themselves reflecting the books that they read. A book is a mirror. A book is a window. It should show you you, but it should also show the world around you. Wow, that's deep. Yeah. And also another thing, Dr. Eddie, I know that you um, touch upon, especially with your um, Boys to Books mentoring and literacy program, life skills and leadership. Yes. And I want to talk about that too, especially life skills. Yeah. Um, I'll just say with Michigan Liberation, for example, we realize that a lot of the times when people get out of these prisons or jail systems, 
they're lacking life skills. Mm -hmm. They don't even know the basics, especially for those who've been locked up for a long period of time. So I want you to speak on, you know, your, your perspective of that. Yeah. You know, we always talk about saving our black boys, saving our black men. We talk about the whole aspect of salvation. Yes, we need that, but we also need liberation. And that speaks to opportunities. It speaks to mental development. It speaks to personality and and tapping into your purpose and your particular identity. Um, When you think about the recidivism rate, you know, when our Mm. brothers are coming, you know, returning citizens. Yes. um, And if we don't provide and have wraparound services and opportunities like the Michigan Liberation Association, like, you know, being able to respect your roots and know who it is that you are and where you come from, the high propensity is for them to return. And so... Uh, having opportunity and, and not just seeing them as X this and felon that, we all X something. Some of us, we did a whole bunch of stuff. We just didn't get locked up for it. Yes. Right? And so uh, being able to have the the whole aspect of training for life skills, how do I ingratiate myself back into society? Who do I need to to network with? Who do I need to connect with? Who do I need to build with? How do I develop a business for myself? How do I use social media if I've been locked up for 10, 15, 20 years and I'm out of the whole aspect and I've seen life has changed so much? What are the skills and the aspects to where I can not just survive in society, but now I can thrive? Wow. And when we have people who have a heart for people who, yes, may have made some mistakes, who may have been incarcerated um, um, in regard to the whole aspect of... uh, uh, unfortunately, in in that vein of they were criminalized um, wrongfully, wrongfully because we got some people who were wrongfully incriminated and they didn't do what they what people said they did. Right. Or uh, the whole aspect of be, be people being incarcerated on nonviolent offenses, you know, because we're, we're looking at day and age now that people yes. have decriminalized what people are still being locked up for. Right. So uh, we, we need to ho- totally restructure the whole framework of it. And we, we have to have people who have a heart like you, uh, who really want to see people liberated. And this is what it's all about. Wow. And if you just joined us, you don't missed a mouthful. I'm here with Dr. Eddie, but you can rewind. You know how we do. Uh, and Dr. Eddie, we got about <laughs> 10 minutes. And, and I'm telling you, I want to spend the rest of this time. We've been talking about empowerment, lit- literacy. We've been talking about your background in the TED Talk, you know, experience that you had. But I also want to dig into your, your bio a little bit. I, I mean, I'm kind of putting you on front street. Just tell us about, like, what it was like, for example, working with T.D. Jakes, you know, yeah. with the Mega yeah. Fest. And then also you was in the BET documentary, It Takes a Village to Raise Detroit. Yeah. Now, the reason why oh, I love uh, Pastor uh, Jakes, but the documentary, because, you know, Detroit, we always seem to get looked o- looked over when it comes mm. to mo- the movie industry. OK, that's a whole nother episode. We'll do <laughs> another time, Dr. Eddie. Right. But just tell us, what was that like, the BET documentary and then working with um, Bishop T.D. Jakes, you know, yeah. with the Mega Fest and some of these and also President Obama? Yes, yes. Please uh, tell us. Uh, phenomenal uh, opportunities that, um, you know, was just uh, blessed to just have, you know, the BET documentary. Uh, really came from the whole aspect of BT connected with one of my homeboys who was doing some work with with mentoring. He right. said, you have a big group of mentees. Can we film there? And so I was hyping up the crowd and hyping up our young people and saying, hey, you know, you know, uh, we, we always had a moniker and a saying, success in my mind, success in my hand. So I think success, I'll speak success because I'm successful. And so BT loved that shot. And they pulled me to the side and said, well, tell me about a little bit more of the producers about the work that you do. Right. And I was talking about literacy. I was talking about leadership. I was talking about life skills enrichment, the Boys to Books mentoring program. And little did I know that would be used for the BT documentary uh, some years ago. Um, when you think about, you know, being with Bishop T.D. Jake speaking at MegaFest, thousands upon thousands of people in Dallas, Texas. I mean, he is the GOAT. He is the guru of the game. Uh, and not just as he is just a great preacher, he's even a greater person, very personable as well. Uh, to go to his birthday party where you see Charlie Wilson on one side, Kirk what? Franklin on another side, Emmett Smith on one side, uh, and then Joe and Charlie Wilson are up on stage um, uh, singing happy birthday to him. And it, it was just an amazing experience to be in a room with uh, people who we see, you know, oft- oftentimes on television and in your magazines. 
And then uh, the old President Obama Volunteer Service Award, the Lifetime Achievement Award from the White yes. House. I'm a part of an organization called, um, uh, it's called uh, Be Me, Black Male Engagement. Mm. And uh, I was one of 62 black men selected in America who are doing the work that are often overlooked and the unsung heroes in our community. Okay. And so to receive that uh, Medal of Honor, so to speak, was uh, just an amazing testament to the work that I'm doing, but also the work that other brothers like myself are doing across the country. And uh, hey, you got it from the, 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 the leader of the free world at that time. Wow, that's <laughs> so, that's amazing. Yeah, that's why yeah. I picked those three things because, like I said, I love T.D. Jakes, and I know he's doing some amazing things, you know, mm -hmm. and Megafest was always a huge thing. And yeah. like I said, that BT, I'm, make sure you check that out, y'all. You know, it takes a village to raise Detroit and everything. Mm -hmm. And to be a recipient of award of President Obama, if anything, with his name on it, oh, as, yeah. you know, is, is awesome, Dr. Eddie. Dr. Eddie, you know, before we got about five minutes, but can you tell everybody where they can find you? I know they, you, your website is www. You know, some of y'all a little, you know, we <laughs> got to help some of our brothers and sisters and all of y'all, you know, listening and watching. EddieConnor.com, but where else on social media? As my grandma said, on that computer. That right, right, right. <laughs> that, that computer that, where that, they can find you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I like to say the revolution not only be televised, it'll be digitized. So right. you go to my website, EddieConnor.com, as you said, E D D I E C O N N O R. Put some respect on my name. Yes. Uh, dot com. And then, of course, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, at EddieConnor, J R E D D I E C O N N O R J R. And then, of course, get get my books. They're on Amazon, yes. all 16 of them. Uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, Audible. They're available as an e-book, an audio book, and a hard copy. That's what's up. Yes. And, Dr. Eddie, tell us, you know, with the five minutes we got yeah. left, some food for thought or what, what's next? Yeah. You know, what's... Yeah. We, you know, we need to hear some... Somebody's going to be listening or watching this, and they just need to hear a word from, from you. Absolutely. You know what I mean? What would yeah. you tell, especially our brothers out there who are, you know, incarcerated or, or just now getting out or have been out? Mm -hmm. You know, what are some words of, of wisdom? Yeah, I, I think one thing that we have to do, uh, I wrote a book called The Mask of Masculinity, How Men Can Reclaim Their Identity, Lead in Love with Vulnerability. I think one thing we have to do is tap into the, the trauma and the triggers of what it is that we have gone through and what we have been through. Yeah. And find out how we can, yes, live through those dying places, but also be able to use our life as a barometer to share and let people know that they can come out of what it is that they've been in. Uh, wow. Life is tough. Life is hard. It's hard being a man. Uh, being a man is hard work, but it's heart work. And when we do the heart work to understand that, listen, we beyond the S on our chest as Superman, we're really Clark Kent. Beyond just parading ourselves as as the Hulk were really David Banner. Beyond just trying to be Black Panther, we're really T'Challa. And so tapping into the essence of not just a, a caricature, but our true character and identity and our purpose and what it is that we can do as fathers, as husbands, as leaders, as scholars to change our community. It's on us to do it. We are better together. We've all we got. We got to make Matthew 25 come alive. As Jesus said, when I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was thirsty, did you give me a drink? When I was naked, did you clothe me? When I was in prison, did you visit me? If you did it to the least of these, you did it unto me. We must be focused on the least, the last, the lost, the left out, the overlooked, the underserved, and the underrepresented. That is our human call for action that we must engage in. And that's what it is to respect the roots. That's it, Dr. Yeah. Eddie. And, you know, I know you gave all your you know, contact information um, are as far as some of your organizations like the Eagles Academy yeah. and how can people get in, yeah. you know, not only involved or, you know, what some people you'd be surprised um, will contact us even as an organization, grassroots organization, organization. And they'll just say, look, I don't know what I can do, but we're, what do you need help with? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And that's Absolutely. usually that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. You know, what do you need help with? Where, you know, when people contact you, what are some things that they can maybe reach out to you about or get involved in like oh, now? Yeah, sure. You know, if people want to bring me in to speak, if they want to bring me in and do a seminar, facilitate a session, talk about many of the subject matter of what it is that we've been sharing about today, they can reach me uh, info at eddieconnor.com as the email on social media, as I was uh, alluding to as well. 
And then, of course, um, you know, being a part of the Eagles Academy, it's a, a weekly online academy where we talk about trauma, we talk about relationships, we talk about your gift, how to pursue your purpose and what all of that looks like to be able to thrive uh, in society. And they can go to theeaglesacademy.com uh, to okay. register, to join, to be a part of it. We have a formidable, thriving, amazing session uh, that we do each and every single week, uh, every Wednesday night uh, at 7.30 p.m. So it, it's absolutely amazing. You want to be a part of it to, to further your self-identity, your development, your growth. Well, you heard it here, y'all. Dr. Eddie Connor. I mean, New York Times bestseller. I mean, like I said before, college professor, empowerment speaker, visionary. I mean, the, uh, the founder of the Access Identity Conference. I mean, please, Dr. Eddie, please keep us um, posted when you're getting ready to do some more conferences. Yeah, absolutely. We want to make sure that we partner with you and get the word out. Also, you heard it. He's available to speak. And everything, because a lot of times, you know, we hear these podcasts or mm -hmm. these messages and we don't, they just sit there. But we got to learn how to, like we say, the next steps. That's right. Take action, yep. you know, and everything. So I just want to thank you so, so much, Dr. Eddie. Thank you so much. I know I, I've been beating this horse about food for thought, but you're just such amazing um, inspiration to our community. Our, not only just to the um, black and brown brothers out there, but to the whole Michigan community. Wow, thank you so much. Yes. And, so. and you are to your true jewel. Thank you for the space and place to be able to share in your amazing show. Salute to your amazing vision. You're just tremendous in everything that you say and do. All right. So, I appreciate yeah. that, Dr. Eddie. And you know, you got to, before we close out, I got to have you say, Michigan Liberation, respect the roots. Oh. You got to say that. All the oh, guests got to say that. Absolutely. Michigan Liberation, respect the the roots. Yes, and I got one <laughs> one minute before we go. Usually, I'll do an icebreaker, Doctor yeah. Eddie, and I'll ask people because Michigan is one of these kind of places where you got to say, okay, what what side of town are you representing, east side or west side, or yeah. is it both sides? You know, I grew up to a certain degree on both sides, but I live on the east side, so I'm an east sider rider. <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard it there, y'all. He's an east sider. Hey, I'm a west sider, so there hey, we, we, go. we, we got much love. We got that balance there. We need both sides. So. Yeah. <laughs> I had one guest say, "Hey man, I've been on I've been on all sides. I've been, I've been to all Detroit public schools. When I got right. kicked out of one, I went to another. So hey, it's all Detroit love and everything. <laughs> Thank you again, Doctor Eddie. Appreciate Thank it. you everybody for listening and watching and everything. We love you. Till next time, what respect, respect the, the roots. roots. All right, y'all, we <laughs> out of here. Michigan Liberation Education Fund, C3, conducts grassroots organizing, leadership development, and civic engagement activities. Michigan Liberation C4 and Michigan Liberation Action Fund, IE, are sister organizations.